Good evening, I'm Lou Sassel. I interrupt with this broadcast with what is believed to be an active stabbing happening right here on Main Street. We're not sure on how many victims. Uh, we don't know how many knives are involved in the situation. It looks like we do have American DSI on scene responding to the situation. Uh, we're hoping that they can deal quickly with what is believed to be, again, an act of stabbing happening on Main Street. Uh, let's see if we can get a response from them to find out how they plan to deal with the situation. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, is, there's an act of stabbing. How, how do you plan to deal with the situation? I have an MP7. stabbing victim. Control, got another stabbing victim. Three stabbing victims. Damn. Oh, oh my god, that's a lot of stabbing. Drop the knife! Don't make me do it! Drop it! No. Alright. Huh. He didn't die. Here. Dispatch, we got the suspect. Let's go ahead and get a slice of the action. Looks like they're gonna take a stab at the city. Well, they don't have knives, they have guns, but they're gonna. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Balaclava, and today we're going over the MP7. This is a big freaking deal, gentlemen. I know I say it about a lot of cool guns I get on the channel, but this is one of those guns that was a dream gun for me, and of course, having it on the channel is a historic moment for myself. Uh, both as a gun guy and a YouTuber, it's just one of these guns that I've often sought after. I thought I was never going to get my hands on one kind of thing. I knew maybe one day it would happen, I just didn't think it was going to happen so quickly. So. Big thank you to Gun Mag Warehouse. They're going to be the sponsor of this video. Go check out their YouTube channel and show them some love in every way, shape, or form that you can. I did a podcast with them. It's going to be, it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be gangbusters. All right, we did a podcast. It was a great podcast. I said, wow, what a great podcast it was. So it's going to be a good time. So big thank you to those guys for taking the time, coming all the way out from Texas, and letting me shoot this MP7. All right, now let's dive in. What, what do you want to say about the MP7, Jeremy? The MP7 is pretty dope. Uh, I'd like there to be more available out there outside of like airsoft and stuff like that But uh, we've pretty much been bitching and moaning about that to HK for a long time So don't see it happening. They can talk about German export laws all they want But this is the real world and you can pretty much do just about whatever you want that tracks. Thanks, Jeremy. Yes, sir Gentlemen, I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this drinking your coffee consuming your beer Make sure you do something important for me though the YouTube's likes interaction. So go ahead, like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Actually, comments to me, I love reading those comments. So get down there, leave a freaking comment. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, excellent way to support the channel. We got a Discord, we do giveaways, we stay up late, we talk about girls, early access to videos, all these great things. I post stuff in there that is a little bit behind the scenes stuff. So it's really fun. Merchandise, merchandise, also an excellent way to support the channel. All right. <laughs> Now, there is a big question, a big issue with the MP7. There's, I've heard multiple stories from multiple different people. Typically, the big issue is these stories weren't firsthand, but people heard them firsthand, so this is a weird, like, 
I'm playing telephone. But essentially what the story is, the commonality amongst all these stories is that the MP7 had a really hard time with that 4-6 round neutralizing the threat. The story is essentially like dumping an entire mag into a bad guy and bad guy like looks at you and runs off. How much stopping power, how much stopping power, how much lethality is in that 4-6 round? And I can kind of see where they're coming from from that aspect because the bullet is actually very small. If you really look at it, I didn't think, I don't have much time behind the 4.6, clearly, but when you really look at that bullet, it is a very small piece of lead. But to its credit, it's coming out of the gun very fast. It's not just one story, it's multiple different stories we often hear about of being able to neutralize a threat. But, I mean, with that being said, I don't, personally, I don't care. I still want one more than anything in the world. I think this gun is beautiful, and I will simp for it all day. But let's, uh, all that being said aside, let's go over the manual of arms real quick in case one day you do find yourself getting to touch an MP7. Just in case you find yourself behind the MP7 one day, at least you can get it to semi-work for you, okay? So what we got going on, your safety selector over here. You got your safe, semi, and fast shooting. You got your bolt release right here. Very weird little function. Essentially, you just push down on that tab. Uh, I was doing both sides initially, but I think once you do it more, you can get the feel for it of doing it with your shooting hand. Charging handle feels very reminiscent of an AR-15 with the dual tabs. I suppose you could do it either way. It feels, it feels weird to try and do it one-sided, and it feels like it's going to break, honestly. So I like to do the two fingers on the gun like that and your bolt release right there. Magazines, now this of course for YouTube's sake is not a 40 round magazine, but typically they are 40 round magazines in this configuration. They of course have variations of 20, 30 round mags. But yet again, for the sake of YouTube, this is a 29 rounder, okay? So, very important. Now it does have these cool little sights with a scalar work mount. I was able to, essentially I can see through the scalar works mount. You can still access them in their little pistol looking variation. With the sights up like this, uh, the sight, blocks the irons and I can't really access them anymore, but but whatever, it's okay. I was mainly running this Aimpoint H2. I guess you wanna get really technical, it could be considered a four position stock. This being one, two, three, and then if you consider it closed, you could be you could be like, it's a four position, whatever. Don't be a nerd, essentially there's that going on. I personally like running it on the shortest open setting. I just like getting tight on the gun and ripping it. I don't even like putting the cheek weld on. I just run that red dot. That's, that was my personal preference, and I thought it did okay. Now, to add to the rarity of the situation, Gun Mag Warehouse brought out this MP7, and it had can number two of 20 AAC cans specifically made for the MP7. This is a specific 4.6 can, and it has a serial number MP72 from AAC. Here's the box itself. Very cool. I know it's kind of like a, hey, I don't care. You may be one of those guys, hey, I don't care, or you may be one of those guys that's like, hey, dude, that's that is wicked cool. The can ran very well. I personally enjoyed shooting it. I thought it made for a very pleasant experience. So good job, AAC. So very dope, very dope situation. Very cool to get show off rarity stuff like this. Just adds the little, little, a little sauce on top to the video. And you gotta love that twist on. Tight. Now the MP7 was initially designed for rear echelon troops, but cool gun being cool gun, cool guys picked it up and they made it their own. This was also seen use by a plethora of law enforcement agencies, including law enforcement agencies here. I think there was maybe a, a renaissance in the 2000s, maybe even 2010s. I don't know when, but uh, law, I could see a lot of law enforcement agencies wanting to pick up an MP7 thinking, hey, we have this super compact package. We have a rifle style round. It would be great. It'd be great for police work. You know, it could, hang, it, could, it could take on potentially heavy duty active shooters or bank robbers with a full auto function and controlled bursts. So I think there was maybe a renaissance there, but then of course all those departments just ended up using 5.56 SBRs to be suppressed and or unsuppressed, right? It's just really hard to beat that 5.56 round for duty use, especially for law enforcement. Now, when you take the suppressor off, and essentially if you had a shorter mag, maybe a, a 20 rounder in there, gun gets very small. I could see like this being a great backup gun if you had to, uh, you know, use a, you know, say a belt fed machine gun or you were a sniper maybe. I know it sounds very Call of Duty-ish and maybe you just want to stick with a handgun, but in my head, like if I had a holster or like this rigged up on my kit somewhere, I'd feel a lot better than just having a, a straight up nine millimeter pistol. Having a great advantage if you had a, to do a shield work on a tactical team. Back when I was a beat cop, a lot of our patrol vehicles, mainly all of them at that point, had rifle rated shields. So if you had to do shield work with it, you potentially could get really good with, you know, rocking a shield and then controlled semi-auto bursts or even bracing the, the rifle on you while working off of a shield of some kind. I mean, typically the SLP, when running a shield back at what I was taught at least, it was pretty much like you have a window on that shield and your handgun is out front using your red dot or irons. That was pretty much the SLP that we were taught. I could see the MP7 being even more of a fullest multiplier 
in that aspect. Now, the issue is, would your department give normal beat cops an MP7? Uh, probably not. I can see the SWAT guys having it, but it'd still be very cool. That's like another little fun thing that I think about when I get to touch these kind of guns. Man, dude, this thing is freaking dope. Like, it's, it's not even like a gun review. At this point, it's just like show and tell with a cool freaking gun. This airsoft gun has such great recoil. Well, because I got the gun and I got the space, I kind of want to push the MP7 out to distance. So we'll start off like, I don't know what, 30 yards. Boom, too easy. All right, let's move back. Probably go, I think it's like 50 to 60 yards is my guess. No, too easy. It's like nothing. All right, weird footing, 100 yards. Let's see what we got. Dude, it's like nothing. All right, 125 yards. All right, there we go. First shot was a bad shot. Good more just to be right. This feels like 150. Honestly, this was a rough zero, so. <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let me try to replicate that. I think I found it. All right. Got to hold right of the target, or I got to hold left. Dread more. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Like 250? All right, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get my marksmanship game up. Ow! Ow! Everything on the ground is sharp. I'm a sniper. Where was it at? Hey! There you go. Oh man. Is that impact? I All right, well, that's, uh, that's a little distance test for you guys. I figure why not open up the legs on this MP7 and see how fun it is. Now, keep in mind, rough zero on this red dot, no magnification, but still very easy to make shots, recoil very low. Yet again, wondering the lethality at this range, but um, yeah, who cares? It looks awesome. Going back to the fact that, hey, I don't have a lot of time on this gun, not an expert, never got paid to use it, but still technically because the gun is so rare, I got a lot of time behind it, which makes me more qualified than the average bear. There is one thing that you should trust me on. This gun freaking rocks. It is awesome and I love it. So I know it's very biased and I don't care. Well, gentlemen, this concludes the video on the MP7. Thanks for watching. This is a great treat. Yet again, thank you to Gun Mag Warehouse for taking the time to let me borrow this beautiful piece of weaponry. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon. Excellent way to support the channel. We have a Discord. We stay up late. We talk about girls. What are those? You'll get to see the MP7 video first before anyone else if you're a Patreon member. We do, did I say giveaways? Sorry, did I say giveaways? You did. I did. Boom. That's it. Behind the scenes stuff. Merchandise, also an excellent way to support the channel. So, as always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. Of the, so, I don't know what happened to your mean social media girl, but I wanted to bully me again. So, I'm like, okay, how, 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 I'm in? Yeah. Is it? There are stories. Let's go ahead and cut right to it. This feels wrong. I don't.